Hello everyone, Andal Star Saber here once again. Today we're going to take a look at one of our events that's out today. We're going to be looking at Rebel Roundup. So first of all, a little background on it. So looking at the allowed units, you have Bounty Hunters, you have Imperial Troopers. Both are excellent squads. Both have their plus, their ups and downs. Both are valuable in certain situations. Both are actually very important for the dark side territory battles. Which one you use is up to you, but I recommend if you're trying to prep for this event, focus on one of the two teams. Don't try to spread it out because it will the, the synergies will be lost ultimately and you won't be able to get as far as easily as you would otherwise. My personal favorite right now is Bounty Hunters. I have both. They're fairly advanced in their gear, but realistically speaking you really want to bounty hunters get you the most mileage and the core of that team is bosk so a lot of the people i've been doing roster reviews on have not done much towards your bosk huge mistake unless you just really have other priorities that are way more pressing bosk is amazing as our character he is useful in a lot of contexts he has the hound's tooth which is absolutely critical to having a powerful and competitive ships team, and he does amazing things. The other ones here are kind of interchangeable, but uh, these are the ones I have the most gear in. I am also pretty close on Zam Wessel, but I highly recommend when you do it, you bring in some heavy hitters mainly for survivability purposes and synergistic purposes. So nice thing about Cad Bane there is He's not very fast, but he does have a pretty high level of avoidance. He hits pretty hard, and he does get some turn meter back when he does avoid. So that's something he may be able to do a lot for you uh, that you wouldn't anticipate. Boba Fett, very good. Still don't have a Zeta. Don't really need it, though, um, to be honest, because all it really does is gain protection up when he uh, does his uh, assassinate ability. But... Um, with Bosque leadership, part of Bosque leadership is that it gives protection back and um, health back whenever um, whenever an enemy suff suffers a debuff or resist it. So pretty much all of these guys I have listed here on nearly every ability cause debuffs. And due to the fact that they cause debuffs, they are getting health and protection back constantly. And you will see that as it plays out. Right now, this is the hardest version of the battle. I'm going to go ahead and let it play on auto to show you how te good this team can be. So we're going to go ahead and demonstrate for you. Open up the battle here. Now, one thing I wanted to mention here, you can see they get all that turn meter advantage right at the start. That's what signifies generally the hardest version. Now, the, they do have an extra ability here, and that's called Many Disintegrations. Go to where you're about to kill a character, because that will cause your own team to do more damage as time goes over. Now, when you put it on auto, you're going to use that more sparingly. It's just the auto won't do it for you necessarily. But I just want to display this on auto to show you how viable this team can be due to the boss leadership. So you can see he's been taking some hits. But because there's so many debuffs going out, they're just gaining it all back. So now the disadvantage to doing this way, it's going to be a little slower. Your team's not going to move as fast. You're not going to do as smart of things as you a person could do. But as you can see, it's not even struggling a little bit. And now on Cad Bane, you see he used the disintegration as did Bosk. So they're going to hit even harder. They're going to do more damage going to trigger there goes contract now we're going to have even more capability in the field so this bounty hunter team is fully ramped up and all i've done is sit in here and watched it go so now watching things play out here you can see although they're very robust and you got things like scare for pathfinders which revive again which it just did there when they have buffs it really isn't that difficult here the bounty hunters just have so much protection and health gain that right now it doesn't matter what the other team's doing or when they do it. it they'll get it back and they'll hit back harder. So just watching things go here. Already took out Sabine. That means we won't have to deal with her armor shred, which is actually one of the more um, 
debilitating debuffs in this entire event. So having that out of the way is obviously preferable to not. And here we go. They knocked out the Phoenix phase, no problem. Okay, now we're getting to a basically a smuggler land of Lolot phase. Um, typically when I'm going through this phase on my own, I recommend taking out all the ads before going for Lobot and Lando. They have less health. You can kill them quicker and you can move on, especially if you have Imperial Troopers. This becomes important. If you're doing Imperial Troopers, um, not Bounty Hunters, it's very critical to understand that Imperial Troopers get their maximum benefit when you're killing things often. So you always want to kind of focus the things that have the lowest health. Take one down, move it to the next one, move it to the next one. Um, they'll always have protection up, turn meter up. They'll keep on going and going. Here with Bounty Hunters, it's really just a debuff flurry. You basically have all these debuffs flying out constantly, and your opposing team just basically can't move very suddenly. You can see I already took out Wedge. That pretty much eats bigs out of the equation. And like I said, this is auto. Um, we're not doing this. Uh, I'm not controlling these actions. And you can see during these phases, this team is extremely debilitated. Now, when doing this, I would do exactly what the AI just did and go after Wedge. He's squishy. He's part of the uh, Biggs triple whack. And um, he does a lot of damage to boot. So he's the perfect candidate to go first. Now we're getting to this phase. You tend to want to focus the ones that are the scouts, not the soldiers, um, first and the pilots. Again, you're trying to get the weak targets first. Here, it really doesn't matter. That's how good bounty hunters can be. And you just keep on working through the system. And you can see there's actually quite a few strikes of disintegrations that have happened up. It's hard to tell and hard to comment on um, based on the fact that it's all happening below the radar because this is on auto but you can see my bounty hunter team is just hitting extremely hard at this point and you don't and basically they get going and the opposing enemies they just evaporate there we go Almost done. So phase eight. These are always the kicker. This is the make or break most of the time. Again, I'm just going to let it play on auto because that's how good my team is at this. And I didn't even really prep their mods too much. They have average level mods going into this. We're just going to keep letting them do what they do. They've got so many disintegrations but built up. They hit pretty hard, although you can see that this squad is no joke. They're taking, they're taking the punches like champs. And it's not too much of a problem for them. Okay, we took out the Pathfinder. They're just going to keep moving around. They're not going to really choose the target I would necessarily choose, but that's okay. I want to have that disadvantage for you right now to um, emphasize how important, especially for this event, but just in general, bounty hunters can be. Um, if you have the means, start farming that Bosque node. Get your Hound's Tooth from the Django node. Keep working it. I mean, bar none, you will get, you will see a return on those investments a lot. There's no question about that. You can see we're almost done here. I'll almost maybe take out Commander Luke here if they doesn't. Nope. Okay. He's gone. So it's really just cleanup duty at this point. Looks like R2-D2. He's just, I mean, might as well be BB-8 at this point and just sitting there and spin and crank up Illuminated Destiny how one side of this is. So you can see that. Very simple. No issues whatsoever. Um, and pretty good rewards. We got some Ghost. For those of you working on your ships, that can be a huge benefit right there. Ghost and Phantom are very important Rebel ships to have. So you want to keep working those. And it's got Cassie and it's got Bags. These are all things that I have already so that'll go straight to the shard shop but all in all good rewards especially for those who are developing their teams and not uh and not maxed out in almost all places it, it's a very good event i highly encourage you to do it i highly encourage you to work on those bounty hunters or imperial trooper teams do what you gotta do for demonstration purposes i'm going to also show the imperial troopers 
squad and the next level down just as a comparison here not as good i'm still gonna have to take it in manual it's very capable nothing wrong with the, these guys they're, they're still very good they're just not as easy to plug in and do their thing as um now it's always a good question here in this case i would use death trooper death trooper uh, can take an opponent that's weakened once there's a death has already occurred on the other side and with that death mark take it down very quickly deciding between range trooper and snow trooper very difficult my range trooper is not very good right now i only have him at gear eight but all the buffs he offers is critical this team Stark Veers. Veers is pretty much a must-have if you want to do an Imperial Troopers team. There's really no point in running this if you don't have Veers for his leadership and for his Zeta, which basically ties a lot of the abilities in that make Imperial Troopers so good. Short Trooper is your default tank for the most part. Health regen um, and a taunt that lasts a couple turns and an auto taunt at the beginning. Short Trooper is a very good unit to have. Um, if you have him geared out, he's going to take a lot of damage along the way, especially if you go to the difficulty we just defeated. I'm going to show you this as a comparison. And the other reason Imperial Troopers aren't as good is the extra ability you get here, which we'll see in a second, just is not as useful. At rapid fire it gets to uh, use multiple variations of your basic attack, but when you use it, a lot of them will just start missing. I'll demonstrate one in a little bit. First of all, here, I want to show how to initiate a team. So the like thing with if you make your Stark faster than just about the rest of your team, which is easy to do, you always want to use this ability. It adds turn meter, throws up some buffs, makes everyone hit hard, gives you a better opportunity of getting a very quick kill. Um, and he comes around again for an AoE too. Very useful to have. Range Trooper, when he comes up, he'll start to... We'll see a lot of things start assisting. This is why Range Trooper is so valuable, even at low gear here. Now everyone has counter, and you see multiple things fired there. So at this point, I don't even need to uh, use the mass assist to take out uh, Baze Malbus at this point. I'm going to go ahead and show you the rapid fire. We'll see if it can kill him. It might miss so many times, though, that he doesn't even die. We'll see. Okay, he's done, but he also dodged there, so that's why I don't tend to like Rapid Fire as an ability. Um, I don't use it very much, because it really doesn't add too much to the fight. It misses so much, you lose a lot of opportunities to kill. Now again, with uh, Imperial Troops, you just want to keep focusing on the weaker characters. Pow was a good one. You can see now all my team has offense up. You'll see these things burn down pretty quickly at this point. But again, because it's not as um, consistent in this regard, I'm not putting it on auto because I can't really trust Imperial Trooper teams on auto to strategically pick apart a team the way I would as a player. So done first round. You can see still not too challenging. Now here, we're looking again towards who's a vulnerable target. Jin so very good target to, to start up with. You don't want to hit this. You can hit the spy. You could hit Cassian, but you want to pick someone who's as weak as possible because um, if you want Imperial troopers to be their best, they gotta hit often. We're gonna go ahead and save the buff clear because eventually there's some taunts that go out here. It's always a nice thing to have. Um, Death trooper, nice thing about him, he hits very hard as well, so it's something to take advantage of. If we're lucky, we'll take out Jyn Erso here and start the um, turn meter and offense up train rolling. Good. Okay. So now things get a little easier. You keep picking apart the weak targets to the extent possible. And we should be able to... Yep. There goes another. Start weakest target again. Rachel, I can take care of that. Sorry, my... We're talking about breakfast things. I'm gonna save the the uh, death mark for a stronger stronger target. Okay, didn't really need it, but keep on working it. 
Okay, successful round three. Okay, we took out our hair there, so now we just keep working our way around. Again, focus the weakest targets. Sabine's always a good candidate because she does have that ability to do the armor shred, which can take apart a short trooper a little quicker than maybe you'd like otherwise, especially in the harder difficulty here. Once you get to these few here, again, this is a slightly weaker difficulty, so you're getting kind of a more limited impression of the Imperial troopers and the way they work. But uh, they do have some inherent disadvantages, which I try to shy away from them. Here with Imperial Troops, again, try for the Wing Guards first. That's where you get a lot of your... Um, that's where you're more likely to get a quick kill. And we did. So now we have the offense up. And we got the turn meter train rolling. Keep on bringing on those masses this. Once you have him, range trooper is a huge benefit to a trooper team, even at lower gear. So I highly recommend, even though it's one node and it takes a while, farm your range trooper if you're really into troopers and try to build him up as you can get to it. Um, adds a lot to the team often more valuable than some of the other players very plug and play most of the time these automatic call to assist do more for your fighting ability than just about anything else like i mentioned before working on wedge and tillies because he's a quick kill working around towards the pilots the reason i avoid bigs because he tends to dodge somewhat frequently and gain turn meter so i tend to move to him later in the fight because we'll go ahead and take him out now Easy day. Keep on working around the room. And success. Now that you got this here, Akbar is actually one of the weaker things available, as is as are any of the spies or the pilot or the officer in the back. I'm gonna go ahead and work the officer right now. If we can kill it quickly, we won't have to uh play in the way we're doing right now we'll have a little chance to really get in there and start killing stuff so one one of the opponents is dead now we can crank it up and just finish off this this phase of the mission much easier bring up the range trooper assisting and the counter good now we just have to finish the job won't do the short troopers talent because there's no, they're not in any danger at this point okay so now again looking for the weak targets hand solos one of your obvious choices work him okay we got a stun that's not ideal but sometimes you can't avoid it okay now we got the train going look for the weaker targets well, don't really have one, so you're just going to have to play the debuff game. Go ahead and keep the ton alive just to keep the uh, hits to Shore Trooper. And the train's rolling, so I'm not too concerned about wrapping up this part fairly easily. Okay, so now you're again you're looking for the weaker targets. Now, strangely enough, in this particular instance, Rebel Officer is your first choice, and often it's moving to Pathfinder afterwards, and that's just because it tends to be a little weaker, even though it recovers itself, it tends to be one of the easier ones to, to kill. So I'm going to go ahead and shift after the officer over to him. If he doesn't get any buffs, he'll be out completely. There he goes. Now we just move around the team. We'll try to take out Rolo next. Throw up a death mark will help our uh, cause tremendously. He's gone. Mark our way around the room. R2D2, why not? We'll keep working him. 
if we need to, we'll carry that grenade for a uh, whenever he casts up smoke screen. Break a few of them out of stealth. Keep working R2. He's gone. Now at this point, you got two fairly similar characters to take out on offense. We'll see if we can do anything with Commander Luke. He's down. And it's just cleanup duty from here. Easy day. Now, if you, we've come this far and we've beaten the two highest difficulties, I think you can accept that I'm going to fairly easily defeat the other, uh, the easy mode very quickly. So I'm not going to show you that on video. Got some decent shards, got some Cassians U-Wing, it looked like, or Bistons. I'm not really sure. I didn't pay any close attention. You get a lot of these rebel things. They're very good for ships. Um, having these things for ships can get you those higher arena scores, which you can get that Zeta every day. I pretty much, with a couple exceptions, when the, it runs down far enough, get a Zeta every single day I, I run during, for my ship's arena. So that's something worth having. I highly recommend working this event. So if you have the opportunity to do it, um, try to take as much advantage of it as you can. If you have any questions, please ask in Discord or in line, and we'll try to address them. And that's all I have for this video. We'll see you next time.